It is time for a Tesla Roadster update. I am here in Seattle, Washington. It's a beautiful sunny day. When does that happen in Washington? A few months ago, I took my red Roadster and I sadly put it in a truck and shipped it away to Carl Medlock. Well, today it's time for an update. What has my Tesla been doing here? What were my big plans with the Tesla Roadster? I'm gonna tell you all of it and we're gonna check out Carl's new shop. I love that there's just Roadster sitting outside, but this is Carl's shop. We've been inside of this before, but since we were here, he completely renovated the entire thing. Get ready to see the inside of one of the only shops inside of the world that actually takes care of the original Tesla Roadsters. Oh my gosh. There are so many beautiful cars inside of here and each one of them has a unique story. So I wanna go through some of the most interesting stories and why some of these cars are here and what they're doing with them. But first things first, I sent this up here for a few reasons. I never told anybody why I shipped it up here. The Tesla Roadsters are so unique with the coloring. You don't see this on Model Ys and Xs and Ss. And Elon confirmed this week that the next gen Roadster is going to have the same colors, the same unique colors that the original Roadster had. There was a few things. First, the carbon fiber was all messed up. Medlock and Sons actually makes their own carbon fiber pieces. So this is the old one. Is this the replacement right here? This is the replacement. Clearly, this one is more clear and not as cloudy. Why are the old Tesla, why is this all cloudy? This car was not driven that much. This has a resin in it and it's not really a, a good quality epoxy resin. It has a little bit of plastic in it and they fade. If you take a look at your roll hoop cover, which we're also gonna fix. Oh, really? Um, it's yellow. It's yellow from the sun. So these are, this piece was made in France. Chinese parts turn cloudy. Hmm. And these parts turn yellow in the hot sun. Only the Texas guys and Utah guys and Hawaii guys get this. This was a Hawaii car before I got it, so that makes sense. Seattle cars, you know, they look fantastic because we don't have any sun. <laughs> I did want to get the carbon fiber replaced because the black just looked, it was the best that we could do with it. But that's not the only reason why I shipped it up here. I wanted to take an amazing trip from New York City all the way to Los Angeles. The Cannonball Run, first in the Tesla Model S and then second, in an original Tesla Roadster. You have to charge at like weird random RV parks and hotels and destination chargers because you can't use a supercharging network. But to be honest, I kind of have wimped out since then because the last one I did it in the Tesla Model S, which is super comfortable, which has supercharging, and we didn't even finish to California. And I had to go to the hospital afterward to get my appendix taken out because I put so much stress on my body by not sleeping and just cruising and eating garbage food the whole way. So Bedlock and Sons, we're going to take this thing and service all of the electronics and make sure that everything is ready to go. There are some things that they can do up here to actually make the car have more range and then also to make sure that I didn't break down in the middle of Kansas somewhere. We're still going to have the car get more range and we're still gonna fix the carbon fiber but then I'm just gonna ship it back home and just have it in Southern Utah and drive it and enjoy this car and not drive it across the country and put all these miles on it. How do you feel about me wimping out? Is it the right move? I'm just shaking my head. I think it's the right move. <laughs> Should have done it. for you. I'll do the trip. You would do the trip in a Roadster? How long do you think it would take? About six days, I would think. Six days. Six days, maybe 10. Oh man, that's so long. You know, living in Seattle and all the rain, I'm just, I think all I think about is driving in the sun. People don't get to see even one Roadster in their lifetime. Tell me about some of these cars because they've got to have some unique stories. Somewhere between here and the other shop is 25 of these cars. This guy owns two Roadsters. He's a Seattle owner, he lives on the Canadian border. But we smelled um, a, just a disgusting odor in the car and we found rat poop, chew marks on the dash. What? There's, um, this so car has got rats were living inside of it? Yeah. So this panel right here goes all the way up. So what happens is the rodents come in, on, there's no way to get into the cabin through the doors or the top or the floor or anything like that. So what happens is the rodents come in through here, they run down the body side, they come up through that hole right there, and they live in the dash. We, we, we get a couple a year, at least two. People just leave their roadsters just sitting in the most random places. Like you had the one that was sitting in a barn in Wyoming forever and just had dust all over it. This is the rat car. We're gonna call it the rat car. It's cool. I like the Hulk green on it. This one right here, I know a little bit about because this car is my friend Thomas's and it is one of the prettiest cars I've ever seen. I know it's the third to last vid number, 
but this could be the last Tesla ever made. The last five Roadsters that they built, they had it in a factory. Elon Musk had this big event. When it came out, it didn't have the Tesla emblem on it. It wasn't on there. Elon Musk himself came over and put the Tesla emblem on there. And so in my book, this is the last Tesla ever made because it was still at the factory and Elon Musk put the Tesla logo on there. So he brought the car here to get the fans fixed and then we just completely went through the car for him and we actually haven't told him all the things we did to his car. Ooh. He'll know when he drives the car, there's something Ooh. different. Okay. This one right here is a signature 100 car. So that means it was basically one of the first 100. First, first 100 built. People always said this was the rarest color, but there's actually 25 of this color. And I think it's ugly. I think it's That is surprising that out of the first 100, a quarter of them were the people actually chose to have this color. I think this is like 92 Toyota Camry green. But people love it. It's not my color, but. There are the Signature 100 series, which this green one over here is one of the first 100. My pants ripped. <laughs> this one has a V in the VIN number and number 23. This is a validation prototype. This is even before the Signature 100 were even made. Somebody paid a lot of money in 2007 in order to have this car to just throw out there to Elon Musk, somebody that was unproven in the car space. And a lot of these cars, unfortunately, over the years just kind of their batteries died, people couldn't drive them, it was a hassle to charge back in the day, and then they just like gave it away to people, sold it for dirt cheap, and then those people didn't, didn't know how to take care of it, and a lot of them unfortunately were lost, were salvaged. Tesla is now taking the Tesla Roadsters and they're taking trade-ins for like Model 3s. They're taking those old Roadsters and they're breaking them down to parts. Because right now if you have a Tesla Roadster and you need something fixed, if you try to go into the Tesla service center, most likely it's gonna be there for a very long time because they don't have the parts. They've gotta source it, they've gotta figure out how to fix them. They also just scrap a lot of them over the years. Last time we were here, we had a thumbnail of the video. I was standing on top of this completely trashed car. They've actually rebuilt this car. Most places in the world, I would imagine even Tesla would have salvaged, would have just said this car is trash. Let's, let's have it go out to parts. It actually looks like a car right now. We've also got all of the other parts that are about ready to get put on. I mean, even this looks clean and new in here, all these parts. So this really is the same car that was wrecked last time. Same car. What happened with this one again? I can't remember why it was. It was rear-ended by a truck and shoved up underneath another car. Oh, that's right. He's fighting with his insurance company. He said he didn't care if they paid or not. He wanted his car fixed. Even though this is caved in and smashed. Yeah. Where it was rear-ended. This car still drives straight. And it, believe it or not, it's still in alignment. Wow. When you get the new battery pack, like I have Tesla's latest and greatest battery pack, the 3.0 battery pack, the R80, I think they call it. They don't do a ton of stuff to the actual PEM, but there are some things in there that need to be done just because you got a new battery pack doesn't mean that everything's gonna run great because the electronics module does need some upgrades. That's one of the things that my Red Roadster, as beautiful as it is, it does need some help. So even though that your car has 9,000 miles on it, that doesn't change the fact that the car has been in, plugged into a wall for the last you know, 12, 13 years, right? These components still get used whether you have miles on the car right. or not. Well, Tesla uses this stuff right here and it over time, it turns into like toothpaste and it just dries out and rots. And then one of these mega poles, see that dark spot? Mm -hmm. They touch down on the heat sink and then it blows this IGBT up. We take these mega poles off, we clean all this paste off and we use a lifetime material. You'll never have to do this again. Oh, my battery, it's crispy right now. Well, I need some new paste. Components. I bought my car for I think $50,000. My Tesla, my blue one. It's not this blue one, it's my other blue one. Bought it for around 50,000. I bought this one for around 70,000. I'm forgetting what the actual numbers were. But now the values have gone up. There's been a few things that have happened. I did a video, should I sell my Tesla Roadster when I potentially could have sold it for $20,000 profit, just like that. Decided not to sell it. And then Jay Leno came out with a video and talked about the um, how collectible these cars are and had some expert on there. That pushed the prices up. And then of course, Tesla has exploded as a company and is becoming more legitimate. And it looks like it's here to stay. It's not this short term blip, this little flash in the pan. It's actually going to be taking over the world as far as cars go. And so these are seeing an increase in value. What do you think about the value of these cars? Like, do you think it's a good time to sell the Tesla Roadster? or should we wait till longer? I don't think they're ever gonna go down in value again. I mean, if you look at the comparison, like a Shelby Mustang in 1965, I think there's like 4,000 Shelby Mustangs made. Well, you look at this car, there's only 1,500 and X made in the United States for the United States market. It's rarer than any, any Shelby that's on the street. So there's probably more Shelbys on the street today than there ever were made of Tesla Roadsters. Wow. I don't think this car, as long as we can keep them running, I don't think this car will ever go down in value. I would not be surprised if there's a few of these roadsters that end up being seven-digit cars. Whoa. What about that red one? Do you think that's a seven-digit car? I think car? red 
I think that red car is worth 140,000 right now. 140? My car is doubled? 40. Do I get a commission? <laughs> <laughs> what is it about the red one that makes you think that, like, realistically, that's worth well over 100,000? So this car has the upgraded battery. It has all of the carbon fiber options you could buy. It has the executive leather. It pretty much is as optioned out as you could possibly get. It's in great shape and it has low miles. What about this blue one right here that's one of the last ones ever made? This blue one is really hard to judge because it's such it's a one-off car. It's the only one ever painted this color. Um, it's an immaculate condition. It has every option available like your car. I think the two are gonna be comparable in price. The owner of this car probably would be disagree with me, but I think, <laughs> um, I don't know, I'm in love with that car. I don't wanna give it back. I wouldn't be surprised if that car goes for a quarter of a million dollars in less than five years. This one right here, I could see that. I could honestly see that because there's pictures of everybody that was there to pick it up. There's a little emblem right there of that. So this car definitely has like, for a collector side of things, I feel like it's more of a collector car. It does have a lot of miles though and a lot of usage and the inside of it is in not as good of a shape as what this is. But from a collector standpoint, it's legit. Oh, here's what happens. I come to Seattle and I'm like, I'll be there for a day. It's plenty of time. And then a few hours go by and I'm like, dang it, I have a flight already. I have to leave. I have to leave all of these cars. There's my Roadster update. We're gonna ship it back within the next month after they finish everything up with it. And I wanna do some fun things with it. I wanna race this car versus some other types of cars and do some things to it that would be really fun. So what's next? What are you guys working on over the next year? Next year we're building a street rod for, we're taking a Model S all wheel drive and we're gonna turn it into a street rod reason, a 33 Dodge suicide door pickup. What? We're gonna custom build a frame, chassis, and turn it into a E-Rod. <laughs> An E-Rod. I'll put a link down in the description and these guys can help you fix your roadsters or maybe help you locate one and buy one. All right, thanks for watching. The new Roadster is coming out soon, the next gen Roadster. I should be getting one, unless Elon Musk decides for some reason not to get let me get the free one that I've earned. I know a lot of other YouTubers have already seen in their account that they're getting their free next gen Roadster. I haven't seen mine drop in there and uh, we haven't done anything shady against the terms of policies. I think we have the seventh or eighth most referrals out of anybody in the world. And so I know we've earned the free Roadster, but um, I do get a little worried um, that I'm not gonna get it. But either way, I would love to drive across the country in the new Roadster and drive across the, the country in the old Roadster and show how far Tesla has come from the worst to the best as far as charging infrastructure goes for the cars around electronics. Should I still do the road trip?